Welcome you all once again to Marine Mechanic Videos. Today the topic is going to be pretty interesting and simple and you will wonder that whether it's really related to marine engineering. However, at the end of the video we are going to relate it to marine engineering and the topic is airlift which is related to aerodynamics and finally somehow we will relate it to marine engineering. So now we are going to do a simple experiment don't think it as a magic or some sort of thing. It's a pure, simple science experiment which even a 6th standard student will do it. So I'm going to explain you the concept of lift with that. And then we will slowly proceed to the drag effects on rudder, etc, etc. All based on aerodynamics. So I've taken a piece of paper which is flexible enough and uh, it's very light, small. You can see nothing is attached to it. Now what I'm going to do is hold it at one tip and then place it. Now you can see that the paper is bending and this bend is due to the gravity. And I'm holding this paper at one end and then keeping it just below my lip. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to blow air. When I blow air the paper lifts up. Now the question is when I blow air on top of it why does the paper lift? You can see once again I'm holding the paper over here so if I blow air it should go down it should put it down but instead it's pulling it up. Now we're going to relate aerodynamics air lift with this paper lift. Now let's assume the paper is dropping like this. All right. Now when I blow air on top of it, I just indicate with the red mark the direction of airflow. When I blow on top of it, what exactly happens is the paper is lifting. But how? The air moves at a high velocity so that the surrounding air particles also move along with it and creates a low pressure. Let's assume this to be the atmospheric pressure P A T M and the pressure which is above the atmosphere or sorry pressure which is above the paper was also atmospheric pressure before I blow it. When I blow the air the velocity of air is more and thus the pressure drops because the flow of air takes away all surrounding air so the pressure atmosphere below the paper is greater than the pressure atmosphere which is on top of the paper here is the low pressure zone and here is the high pressure zone which tends to lift the paper up so this is called air lift or simply lift this phenomenon is used in aircraft wings, helicopter blades, whatever. This is the basics of all aerodynamics right from F1 car to the ship's rudder. Now, I'll do the experiment once again. You can practice it well either and teach your kids if you want. I have the paper at the tip. The pressure over here is atmosphere and here is also atmospheric pressure. What I'm going to do is blow air at high velocity. When I blow at high velocity, all the air which is nearby is being sucked or ejected. And thus the low pressure is created on top of the paper and high pressure at the bottom, thus the paper lifts. Now, I said the air at the surrounding on top of the paper is ejected. When I use this term, you will understand that or you will remember one of the marine equipment the ejector or the ejector so this is very similar principle with which the ejector works in the next video you will watch how the ejector works maybe an air ejector or a brine ejector we will understand with this concept how the air ejector or the brine ejector works
welcome you all once again to Marine Mechanic Videos and the topic for the day is ejector. Before proceeding to the working of an ejector we will understand what is an ejector and a simple construction of an ejector. In my previous videos, one of my videos, I have explained you the concept of air lift or the lift mechanism of showing a simple experiment with a paper blowing on blowing air on top of it so that the paper lifts. I'll post the link over here, just click it and recollect the concepts. With that concept in mind, we'll proceed constructing an ejector. So there are four simple steps which I have uh, put over here. So let's start with step number one. Let's assume that we have a fluid, let's say air or water, whatever, a fluid under high pressure on the upstream of the valve. So this is the upstream and this is the downstream. All right. So this valve is shut now. So here is pressure energy and the velocity is zero now because there is no flow of fluid and the valve is shut. And on the downstream, we have a nozzle over here. This is the nozzle, which is converging in nature. Now on the second step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this valve. So the fluid, which is under high pressure, is going to flow to the low pressure region. So there's going to be a drop in pressure. So the fluid over here passes through this valve and then due to the converging nozzle there is drop in pressure and increase in velocity. So that's the purpose of nozzle. I will write it over here. What it does is drop in pressure and increase in velocity. To be more technically specific, the pressure energy is converted into kinetic energy. And if you find too complex, we will just simply call it as there is a pressure drop and thus the velocity increases at the nozzle. So there is a flow outside like this. Let's assume this to be air. So there is an air flow out like this. On the third step, we will understand clearly what is happening due to this air flow. Now as the air flows, I'll just change the color, there are some air particles which are surrounding this flow. So these particles are set in motion and these are called as eddies. And these eddies are circulating or we don't know the nature of these eddies and these are called as eddy currents. If this is air, this is called as air eddy currents and if this is water, these are water eddies. If the water is flowing and you have air particles nearby, then the air is set in eddies. So this also starts moving along with this. Now what I'm going to do is, on the step 3, with the flow of fluid from the high pressure zone via the nozzle out, what I'm going to do is insert a tube on top, like this. I'm sorry. Something like this. Cover the nozzle. I'm going to insert a tube like this. So, I'm inserting this nozzle and pipe arrangement inside a tube. Now what happens is, the eddies are wiped off, or the eddies are more streamlined. What happens is along with this water or air particle, the eddies also start to travel like this and it also starts sucking air from the surrounding. And in this manner, the eddies are more streamlined. Now when I go to step 4, I'm going to put the same pipe but the opening is not over here but it is at the down. Let's say I'm covering over here and then I'm sorry. Alright, so this is the pipe and I'm having an opening here. Now the eddies are going to travel along with the fluid flow or air flow and then it's going to start sucking air from here. 
so finally, what we understand from this is we have a high pressure fluid which is called as the motor fluid or the motion fluid because this is the prime source of energy which sets the secondary fluid to flow. That's why it's called as motor fluid. We have the high pressure fluid and a nozzle arrangement which is converging in nature and this nozzle creates a pressure drop and thus resulting in high velocity of the motor fluid which is the primary fluid. Since the primary fluid flows through high velocity there are eddies set up in the surrounding and this eddies if it is channelized inside a pipe this will take in air which is more of streamlined in nature and when we close these two areas of the pipe and then have an opening at the down like this it will start sucking in air and then it will start ejecting the air out so this is a simple construction of an ejector in the next video we'll see the detailed construction of an ejector and it's working In this technical video, we will understand the construction and working of a marine freshwater generator. Freshwater generator is used to convert freshwater from seawater on ships. The produced freshwater is mainly used for drinking purpose, for boiler water system and for other freshwater consumptions. Let's understand the operating procedure of a shell and tube type freshwater generator starting with different parts of the system. The first component of the freshwater generator is a freshwater pump, which is used to supply the generated freshwater to ship's freshwater tanks by taking the suction from the generator. The normal rated capacity varies from 3 to 5 meter cube per hour, which depends mainly on the supply head. The next component is the ejector pump, which supplies pressurized water to the eductor for creating vacuum. It also supplies cooling water to condenser. Rated capacity varies from 25 to 30 meter cube per hour and pressure 3 to 6 bar. Air and brine eductor. It is used to remove the accumulated brine from the generator and to create the necessary vacuum. Evaporator. It is used to boil off the seawater at lower temperature with the help of vacuum created inside the freshwater generator shell. Condenser to condense the freshwater vapors and collect them in liquid form for further use. The other components of the freshwater generator are main engine jacket water line with a bypass valve, relief valve, vacuum gauge, thermometer, and a vent cork, which must be shut before operating the freshwater generator. Now let's understand the operating procedure of this equipment. Open ejector pump line discharge and suction valves. Open the feed water valve to freshwater generator evaporator. Start the ejector pump. Water will pass through the condenser and air brine eductor. Ejector pump also supplies feed water to the evaporator, which is then converted into fresh water. The eductor will also create necessary vacuum in the freshwater generator. Open the jacket water discharge valve and then the inlet valve to the condenser. Simultaneously, shut the jacket water bypass valve for the generator slowly. Keep checking the main jacket water pressure. Water vapor will be created by heating off the jacket water temperature as at low pressure water boils at lower than the normal boiling temperature. The generated water vapor will pass through the demister, which will remove the carried salt and only allows water vapor to pass through. The shell temperature will increase and there will be a slight drop in the vacuum. This indicates evaporation has started. The vapor will get cooled down by seawater in the condenser and will get collected as fresh water. The salt will get collected at the bottom in the form of brine. The eductor will continuously discharge the brine to overboard. Now open the freshwater distillate pump discharge valve and bypass valve of salinometer 
to initially check the salt content. Keep shut the discharge valve going to freshwater tank. Start the freshwater distillate pump. Check the salt content by tasting the water. Once the salt content decreases, switch on the salinometer and keep the alarm in mute condition. Shut the bypass valve and activate the alarm once the salinometer reading goes below the alarm limit. Open the freshwater tank filling valve. Now the generated fresh water will get collected in the desired freshwater tank. 